Hey everybody, it's Gilly Monster. Sorry it's been a while since I've done a voiceover video. The last couple of Kerbal Space Program videos I did were really just because I had a little bit of free time. Uh, I've been learning a new job for really probably about the past six months or so. And uh, I, it really took up just about all of my free time. And uh, those, Kerbal, those Kerbal videos were just kind of pieced together over about a week or two each, you know, just even though they're only a couple minutes long. And uh, But what I want to do now is because I realized I was going to have some free time for at least the next month. Or significantly more than I used to uh, I decided to do a little bit of modeling and the reason why I picked modeling right now is because one I love doing Gundam models I've been playing with these things pretty much since I was I don't know before I was a teenager you know but then it was you know action figures but uh, nerf uh, modding right now is just too too much an expenditure of resources and stuff for it to actually be worth it so I decided to do something on a little bit smaller scale and uh, these are actually the first couple, I guess, really successful kind of model paints that I really did. And uh, right here we have a goof flight type. And being the fact that I have some experience with aircraft, I figured, you know, sticking with the traditional paint job of, uh, you know, kind of grays and blacks and very military-esque uh, jet colors, you know, things like exhaust and, you know, machine gun hits all up along the side. Uh, I thought this was actually turned out very successful. I'll actually post some videos on this one later. But uh, the next uh, project that I did was a Zogok. And it's supposed to be a prototype amphibious mobile suit. And this was definitely a more thorough, uh, thoroughly done paint job than the Goof. Because, I mean, you can see the, uh, the instruction manual there on the right. It was supposed to be kind of a bright, almost kind of prototype red. And uh, I figured I would go more in depth with this one. And that was probably about six months ago. And it was supposed to be kind of an amphibious mobile suit. So I decided to give it a lot of uh, rust and kind of grime and grease and detailing and stuff like that not so much uh, not so much kind of battle damage but what I'm going to do next uh, for my next model project is the one in the middle is called a, a high gog and it's supposed to be uh, I forget which timeline or what series Gundam is from but it, it really just kind of leapt out at me because I kind of like those oddball mobile suits I mean you just look at the two I've got sitting here right now and uh, it's just something that's very heavily specialized and I thought very unique and be really cool to do. And the fact that it was going to be uh, an amphibious mobile suit meant that it was going to have a lot of interesting detail to do. Again, kind of like the Zogok, uh, it was going to have like a lot of rust detail and things like that. But I decided I was going to give this thing kind of like an in-between, an in-between kind of super heavy paint job like the Zogok and then kind of like a lighter one like I did for the Goof. Whereas I'm going to more kind of stick with the organic color of the plastic because it is very, I think, effective uh, as far as like what its purported use is supposed to be. So uh, on to the tools, I've got a pair of scissors here just to clip the parts out of the runners. I know it's not the preferred uh, tool, but mine actually broke the last time I was using it, so I've been working making do with uh, scissors. I've also got a pair of pliers here to hold on to the backs of parts while I'm actually kind of decaling and painting them so that way I'm not leaving any kind of fingerprints. Uh, basic assortment of... Uh, kind of artist brushes, uh, the detailing q-tips with the kind of like they come to a point so you can get in kind of like the fine details. Uh, for colors I've got things like uh, just kind of basic silver for wearing metal that hasn't quite rusted through yet. Uh, kind of a rubber, rubberish brown. It's really almost a, almost a black uh, for things like rubber hoses and if I want to give the feet kind of like rubber grips or something like that. I've got kind of like a fluorescent orange here for things like the rocket thrusters, uh, just the ports. I'm not actually going to be uh, painting the uh, the rocket pack on the back. Uh, ubiquitous flat black for just kind of a general griminess, especially around things like the joints. And then uh, something I want to really want to focus on because this is also a uh, an amphibious mobile suit like the Zogok is perhaps doing a uh, a little bit of rust here and there. Not quite as heavy as I did for the Zogok, just because it's uh, the high gog is going to still keep its kind of basic color, its basic paint color. So I want to perhaps you know slightly less uh, le less rust color, so that way it doesn't stand out quite as much. You know, in this case, less is more. And then of course I've got uh, kind of a gloss red for things like the details, like the. Uh, I don't even know what these are, kind of like the vernier thrusters or something like that, the maneuvering ports. And then I've got uh, kind of a flat lacquer here in the back, and then my uh, paint center, and then kind of a basic sandpaper if I decide I want to kind of pre-prep things, but just because it's super basic, I might not even bother doing that. 
So uh, next up is actually kind of doing the, uh, the techniques. And then I'll talk to you then. All right, so I've got everything taken off the runners. Everything is more or less kind of loosely put together in what I'll call like a partially exploded view. And I'm not actually going to um, paint everything or glue everything together as it is. I just want to get uh, an idea of where of what parts we're going to be where so that way I can kind of color coordinate and make the painting process a little bit easier. So like say some of the blue pieces are all going to be like the same general kind of tone. They're going to have the same kind of general wear and tear marks so I can do all those all by themselves, you know, all at once. And then like say some of the gray pieces like in here for like the hydraulic hoses and stuff, they're going to all get a similar treatment. All the orange pieces are going to get a similar treatment. So it's really just kind of, I guess, itemizing what colors are going to, are going to uh, what kind of colors are, are going to have what kind of details put into them. And uh, just a kind of a, a secondary thought. I figured that I would use kind of like this really dark kind of navy blue just as almost like a kind of a, a very light kind of sponge on just to add like an extra kind of dimension especially where like pieces like this where like they meet in the middle just to kind of add like perhaps a little bit more uh, a little bit more detail as well as in like possibly uh, getting with things like oil and rust stains in uh, areas like this is like these are little dots, these kind of recessed areas, and really just to kind of give it all that extra little bit of, uh, of detail. So uh, I'll give you another update when I'm done. Okay, so time for an update. About midway through the actual shell painting process, I decided to change course and uh, do something a little bit different. Whereas most people apply their washes with a brush and they end up getting kind of these, uh, these kind of brush strokes along the surface of the paint, I decided I didn't want that, so I decided to make my own wash, and I went to my hobby store and got a thing of Tester's paint thinner, and basically just kind of used a little, some, a few, well, actually more than a few, probably about maybe half a teaspoon of a uh, sea, of a uh, flat sea blue to make this kind of watery blue solution, and then I poured it in the bottom of this jar, you can see kind of the remnants of it that kind of leaked out onto the sides, and then I just kind of dumped the, the pieces in there and then swished it around so that way it kind of flowed over it in very much the same way that water would. And uh, the result is kind of like this very organic looking kind of shading process. You can see a few streaks here, but I think it worked out pretty good. This is actually, I think, a better example. And it gives it that kind of worn paint look that you'll get on a lot of sea vessels. And uh, you can also see I added rust, being that this is in constant contact with seawater, that's going to be a problem. And so I figured that would actually this would actually be a very good chance to show off actually how I make my rust streaks. Let me get a fresh Q-tip here. Okay, I've got my rust, and it's literally just this simple, just a very little bit on the tip of the brush. You kind of want it to be kind of in a tapering fashion, like it's been dripping down the side of the uh, the side of the mobile suit here a minute, and then you take your Q-tip, and it's literally just this simple. And there we go, rust, just like that. A little more in the corner here. So yeah, there's Gilly Monster's rust uh, rust tutorial for your mobile suits. So uh, I actually, ooh, <laughs> I actually went in and painted that little bit, kind of a metallic red, and uh, it's not quite dry yet, so I need to actually let that be for a little bit. So yeah, I think I'm going to save this kind of, we'll call it the ocean wash, or actually, you know what, it's going to become the bathing technique. It's not even going to be the, the wash, I'm going to call it the bathing technique. So, uh, I mean, yeah, feel free to, feel free to try it, and uh, just kind of don't be afraid to experiment a little bit. But on to the next stage. Okay, quick note. The High Gog is a sickly little mutant. What do I mean by that? Well, considering this model kit was manufactured about 13 years ago, and uh, plastic has a tendency to dry out and get very brittle over the years, this was definitely suffering from that. So you can look at here at the shoulder armor, actually you can see some of the pegs in there have broken and I have been extremely delicate with these and they still break. 
and I'm thinking about using some epoxy to further you know hold these things together but you look at that this one's cracked uh, some of the things in here inside the forearms have cracked I mean I think that's actually the beginnings of a crack right there if I'm not mistaken but I just that's why I decided to put this stuff together when I did is because I didn't want to have to take it apart again and risk something actually breaking for good so just something to keep in mind uh, when you're working with this particular model you really do need to actually have it um, the less handling the better I'll just say that and uh, for some of the older models this is actually the Gelgoog uh, HGUC 144th scale shoulder pad and you can see those little peg slots in there has had the same kind of brittle plastic failing uh, when handled too much so just be gentle all right, I'm back with another update. This is going from a simple paint job to essentially a life-saving surgical procedure, at least as far as this model is concerned. I mentioned earlier that the plastic on this model is particularly weak, and uh, it has come back to uh, haunt me in a couple of very rather sensitive areas. These, uh, the wrist joints right here for the forearms have actually, uh, in the cases of all but one socket, which I decided to break off just for making it even, have snapped off completely and I've ground, gone in with my Dremel tool over here and ground out most of what was left of the sockets. And I came up with what I found out was a fairly, what I think actually was a fairly ingenious solution. And uh, so what I did is I took a piece of the parch tree, which you can see down here, and I filled in the gap in the wrist with a little bit of ABS and PVC uh, plastic epoxy so that way you know it'll stick in there and it'll help hold the what's left of the joint in there and uh, I took an appropriately sized drill bit which is right here it's pretty much the exact same diameter as the uh, as the plastic runner piece and drilled through there so that way this all essentially becomes one solid joint and then right here I've actually gone and done it already. I essentially took that piece of uh, runner and turned it into a plastic washer. I clipped it extra long so that I had plenty to work with and then I took the heat gun which you can see right there and uh, used this small metal screwdriver right here, heated up the end and then just gently pressed it down until it was nice and close to the actual original shell and then I took my Dremel tool again and ground it down. And here I'm actually going to show it being done on the other, the other wrist. So you'll be watching this probably about four times speed. See, look at that. Got another break right there. I don't even know if I want to bother with it anymore. <sighs> Yet another break in the long line of many. one side there's the other side Perfectly 
the flexible wrist joint. Okay, so in the last little update, uh, I'll let you guys see how I managed to repair the wrists on this thing after they broke. That trend basically continued to just about every major joint on this thing because I looked it up and apparently paint thinner has a tendency to weaken uh, different types of plastics. So I guess uh, ABS plastic is one of those types. But anyway, so I managed to break both the shoulder sockets, like both shoulder sockets, so both of these things right here were broken. And uh, actually I'll show you here that right now. This thing out. You see, I packed it basically with uh, some plastic repair putty uh, that you know it hardens, so that way it holds the joint in place. And it actually is thankfully in a place where it doesn't show too much. Actually, it's not really going to show at all. And uh, I also did it to the other shoulder socket as well, and then both that hip right there managed to break and then both ankles as well as well as numerous peg and socket assemblies hold on stay put but yeah this thing is done and uh, despite all the technical problems I had with it I think it actually looks uh, looks fairly decent uh, you can see I took the missile and actually added a little bit more detail than just a simple gray husk, if you will, I gave some black detailing at the back, and then uh, the yellow stripe indicating a high explosive payload, and then to suit the uh, the luck I've had with this kit, <laughs> I gave it number 13 for its uh, for the frangible fairings that fit over the, uh, the forearms. I also went and uh, kind of weathered, or rather kind of grimied up jetpack if I can get it off. This thing has been a very stubborn model. So you can see I just gave it just a little bit of grime because I figured if uh, you know there wouldn't be just the number of uh, high gogs in 080 so uh, I'd assume they probably recovered that and uh, refurbished it but you know didn't necessarily have time to clean it up to pristine condition so I'm actually going to make a, another video separate, just kind of detailing this thing as a whole. So, uh, if you guys want, there'll be uh, some better pictures and video of it there. So, thanks for watching.